The North Link Line Railway was one of the national 10 major construction projects. Passengers traveling between Taipei and Hualien had to transfer to a bus operated by the Highway Bureau of Ministry of Transportation and Communications at Suao Station, taking the Suwa Highway to Hualien, or take a ferry between the ports of Keelung and Hualien. In 1973, Typhoon Nora hit eastern Taiwan, severely damaging transportation in eastern Taiwan. To solve the transportation problem, three proposals were considered. 1. Widening the Suwa Highway. 2. Additionally, constructing a dual-lane highway. 3. Constructing the North Link Railway. The third proposal, which was less expensive and more beneficial than the second, was reported by the then-chairman of the Taiwan Provincial Government, C. Tungmin, in a cabinet meeting. It was then ordered to be built by Cheng Chinkwa, the premier at the time, and included in the ten major construction projects. Construction of the North Link Line officially began on December 25th of the same year and was completed on February 1, 1980. Along the line, there are 91 large and small bridges, 16 tunnels, with a total length of 31,029 meters. Among these, the Guanin Tunnel, at 7,757 meters, was the longest tunnel in Taiwan at the time. More than 40 years ago, general transportation was mainly by road. The Suwa Highway, connecting Suwao in the north to Hualien, was particularly breathtaking as it bumped along the cliffs suspended between the Pacific Ocean. The Central Cross Island Highway, linking Taichung City, traversed the central mountain range with winding, steep roads, no less perilous than the Suwa Highway. Additionally, landslides often occurred during typhoons or the rainy season, causing traffic interruptions. The existing transportation system was insufficient to drive the prosperity and development of the eastern region. December 25, 1973, holds special significance for Hualien. The groundbreaking ceremony of the North Link Line Railway finally fulfilled the long-held wish of residents in the eastern region. Spanning 82.3 kilometers from Suao to Hualien, the North Link Line Railway traverses a coastal terrain interspersed with high mountains and valleys, with 31 kilometers of construction taking place in tunnels. The Retsair Engineering Agency swiftly established construction office in November 1973, actively taking on the most challenging project among the 10 major construction projects. The North Link Line Railway construction began simultaneously from both the north and south ends. From terrain surveying and positioning to the commencement of construction, over 3,800 pieces of large construction vehicles and heavy machinery were mobilized. At the start, the preliminary estimate for the volume of earth and stone for the roadbed was over 3 million cubic meters. To ensure the stability of the roadbed, the stones used for embankment were not sourced from the sides of the roadbed but were instead excavated from wider riverbeds, regardless of the distance, to obtain the necessary sand and gravel. The processes of embankment and excavation, with the close cooperation of excavators, bulldozers, and haul trucks, fully demonstrated the maximum efficiency of heavy machinery in this project. Along the route of the North Link Railway, the terrain consists of either high mountains or wide valleys. There are 22 major bridges and 75 minor bridges along the entire line. There were two focal points during the construction of the bridges, first, to prevent corrosion from seawater salinity and tides, all bridges were constructed with reinforced concrete structures. Second, the bridge piers and abutments adopted a semi-gravity style, utilizing the principle of gravitational sinking to place caissons. The pre-stressed beams of the major bridges were not constrained by the terrain and construction limitations, and were instead precast at a different location. The longest, the Hepping Bridge, spans 1,400 meters with 72 piers and the bridge deck is 13 meters high. The first phase of the project, the southern section from Xinqing Station to Hualien, spans 20 kilometers. As it is located in a plain terrain, involving earthwork and bridge construction, it was quickly completed and opened to traffic, half a year ahead of the scheduled time, receiving praise from all sectors. The opening ceremony was held on July 26, 1975, 
attended by over 10,000 spectators, and the trial run of the trains went very smoothly. During the annual typhoon season, RSEA's employees braved the wind and rain, undeterred by difficulties, to rush the completion of the North Link Railway. However, the most challenging tasks were undertaken by the RSEA's employees working on tunnel construction. Difficulties arose especially when encountering poor geological conditions or when constructing tunnels beneath riverbeds, as heavy rainfall outside would increase the water flow inside the tunnels specifically, the south entrance of the Yangchen Tunnel, the third inclined shaft of the Guanin Tunnel, and the south entrance of the Huron Tunnel had a water discharge rate of 25 tons per minute. In October 1978, when Typhoon Aura struck, the water discharge rate in both the Guanin and Yangchen tunnels exceeded 150 tons per minute, leading to all machinery in the tunnels being flooded and paralyzed, and causing collapses. This resulted in significant damage and complications. The 15 tunnels, totaling 31 kilometers in length, are a key part of the entire North Link Railway project. In the case of poor geological conditions, the top-down method of excavation was often used, utilizing the main tunnel below as a transportation system to expand the excavation at the top guide pit. The two tunnels eventually merged into a single large tunnel, making the construction the most arduous and dangerous. To tackle the more challenging and heavy-duty tunneling work, after careful research and decision-making, Two of the then latest foreign tunnel boring machines, colloquially known as Big John, were introduced. They were used in the Yangchun and Chengda tunnels. Initially, the excavation went smoothly, achieving a record of completing over 10 meters in one day. However, due to incomplete geological survey data for the entire North Link Railway, the Big Johns were unable to cope with the sudden changes in complex geological conditions during excavation severely affecting the overall tunnel construction progress. Consequently, the RSEA decided to purchase two new types of shield tunneling machines in addition to the two existing rotary drilling rigs in the Gufeng and Huron tunnels. These new machines, deployed at the north and south ends of the two tunnels, were designed to ensure construction progress. This new type of drilling jumbo features three levels of drills, with a total of six drill heads that can operate simultaneously. The gantry jumbos drills first create holes in the mountain wall for the placement of explosives, significantly improving efficiency. For full-section drilling operations, it is the most efficient excavation machinery. The hardship of working in tunnels is unimaginable unless one has experienced it firsthand. Beyond the constant danger of collapses, workers must contend with air filled with dust and exhaust gases in hot, humid conditions. Only those engineering and technical personnel equipped with a strong sense of responsibility, patience, and perseverance can handle such challenging projects. The most feared aspect of drilling operations is encountering sudden geological changes or striking groundwater springs, hence each drill head is closely monitored by dedicated personnel who dare not be careless. Fractured zones and weathered, loose rock layers are among the most dangerous geological conditions during construction. Typically, it takes about 4 hours from drilling to a depth of 1.8 to 2 meters to the blasting phase. RSEA employees work around the clock in two shifts to continuously push forward the project day and night. At the south entrance of the Chengda Tunnel during the 1977 construction competition, a record-breaking work performance was achieved with continuous efforts for four months, reaching a maximum excavation of 255.3 meters in one month. At the construction site, while holes are being drilled and explosives are being installed, personnel are also preparing to connect the fuse to the detonator. This process requires skilled technique and a high degree of vigilance. Although every tunnel is equipped with large ventilation equipment, the construction workers responsible for the tunnels have spent up to five years, day and night, including holidays, inside the tunnels alongside machinery, under such murky air conditions. They do not shy away from the challenges ahead, their greatest joy comes from seeing the tunnel stretch forward, inch by inch, by their own hands. 
steel supports are temporarily used to brace the excavated tunnels to prevent the danger of collapses from unstable rock walls. Outside the original steel support scaffolding, prepared tunnel lining steel forms are added to facilitate the subsequent operations of concrete lining on the inner walls of the tunnel. The lining operations for the North Link Railway are carried out in two ways, depending on the terrain constraints. In remote valleys, cement mixer trucks are used, with pump trucks applying pressure to inject concrete between the steel form and the rock wall. For larger volumes, a new type of rail-mounted concrete transport vehicle is employed. Inside the tunnel, another method involves the installation of an integrated heavy-duty steel form that can move back and forth on rails. The coordination of these methods allows for the rapid and safe placement of large quantities of concrete. In this way, through a collaborative division of labor, following the sequential process of drilling, blasting, mucking, and lining, countless failures and setbacks were encountered. Yet, valuable excavation experiences regarding various tunnel geologies were also gained. As night deepened and the world drifted into sleep, the construction sites along the North Link Railway remained active, indifferent to day and night. The sounds of machinery operated in harmony with the waves and the sea breeze, echoing throughout the entire valley. On October 30, 1977, the Chongda Tunnel, spanning 2,682 meters, was the first to achieve breakthrough. When the northern and southern ends of the tunnel met, the deviation at the center point was approximately 4 millimeters to the left and right, and only half a millimeter vertically, marking a new era in precise measurement within the country. The 2,100-meter-long Qingshui Tunnel also achieved breakthrough on December 12, 1977. The Hepping Tunnel, the central tunnel of the North Link Line measuring 2,970 meters, was also completed. The section south of Hepping Tunnel had a successful trial operation, and on February 8, 1979, it officially began operations, serving the eastern regions ahead of schedule. The Guanin Tunnel, with a total length of 7,757 meters, is the longest tunnel in the North Link Line. It was constructed using various methods and faced numerous setbacks. The tunnel accommodates double tracks and features a fully automatic passing station. The 5,286-meter-long Nunau Tunnel, crossing beneath the Nunau village and the Baxianyan riverbed, also encountered significant difficulties with up to 200 tons of groundwater per hour seeping in during construction. The 3,981-meter-long Yangchen Tunnel was constructed 20 meters below the riverbed. The constant flow of groundwater necessitated a special underground water drainage channel within the tunnel. By the end of 1979, the North Link Railway project was nearing completion after six years, enduring ten typhoons and six rainy seasons. Fortunately, due to the cooperative efforts of the workers, the impacts of various disasters were minimized. During the final stages of completion, severe ground subsidence was discovered in the last 80 meters of the Gufeng Tunnel, located beneath the Suwa Highway, in early 1979. After multiple studies by geological experts, it was decided to switch to open-cut construction, requiring the excavation of over 700,000 cubic meters of earth. Due to the tight schedule for the completion of the entire line, all workers in the construction area gave up their holidays and immediately dispatched a large number of machines for support. As a result, this final Herculean effort of moving mountains and reclaiming land was overcome with the reinvigorated spirit of the RSEA team, fulfilling the completion requirements. President Chang made several visits to the mountainous construction sites to comfort these pioneers who blazed trails through rugged landscapes praising them for becoming a model in the engineering world. On December 25, 1979, a whistle echoed throughout the eastern mountains. The trial run of the North Link Railway, under the watchful eyes of the nation, embarked on its destined track. The air was filled with the sound of celebratory firecrackers, reflecting the eager anticipation in everyone's eyes. The county residents who had donated funds and land became the first honored guests to ride the North Link Railway. The journey from Suao to Hualien, which originally took four hours, 
was reduced to just over an hour, finally realizing the dream of connecting Taiwan's east and west coasts. On February 1, 1980, the Northlink Railway officially began operations, not only bringing the eastern and western parts of Taiwan closer together but also changing the fate of the east, stimulating exchanges and interactions between the two sides. The RSEA's employees, entrusted by the nation overcame countless difficulties to complete this route, enabling the people of the east to return home quickly and safely. Since the Northlink Railway, a single-track line constructed by the RSEA as part of the 10 major construction projects, officially began operations in February 1980, it has stimulated exchanges and interactions between the eastern and western parts of Taiwan, boosted the tourism industry in the east, and facilitated the gradual development of natural resources. The rapid increase in passenger and freight traffic led to the insufficiency of the original single-track railway, especially during major festivals and holidays when tickets were difficult to obtain. As a result, starting in 1992, while maintaining its original traffic, the Northlink line underwent simultaneous upgrades for double tracking, heavy tracking, electrification, and signal control improvements to facilitate the transport of more passengers and freight. Most of the project was completed by the end of June 2003, and an electrification inauguration ceremony was held in Hualien on July 4. The Northlink Railway has become an indispensable part of the transportation in eastern Taiwan and has also contributed significantly to accumulating crucial experience for railway engineering projects in Taiwan. However, it also represents the most significant chapter in the memories of RSEA's employees, marking an essential period in their work history. In the place once known as the hinterlands, where the sun hits first, RSEA's employees spent years underground in the dark, diligently advancing their expertise. It was as if they were burying a time capsule for themselves, encapsulating the years of labor and their passion for the project, waiting for those in the future who would interpret this segment of engineering history, to see the life stories that lie beneath the railway tracks.